Oh, all right, it's already advertised. Um, yeah, it's just the beginning, so we all have some more algorithms now. And this also gives me a chance to properly pronounce BKZ as Blochkortchen Solotare. Very much sorry for um, the researchers involved that I mang out the names before. So it works like LIL, except for you're singling out a block. And in this block, you're doing an exact SVP. So you have a small dimension for well, the block size. And for that, you then compute the exact shortest vector or the exact shortest vectors. And then you take the next block and you combine them the same way as an LL. And then you again, on the third short block, do an exact computation and you proceed and you proceed. So the quality depends a lot on this block size M. The larger the block size, the better the quality of the resulting basis. But of course, that also means you're doing a more expensive computation for each of the blocks. So then it's also the runtime that depends on that. Um, in enumeration algorithms, we're going to cover on these slides. And then for sieving algorithms, I recommend, again, a talk by Thijs Laarhoven. Uh, he has made very nice uh, drawings, and there are also presentations from him uh, giving these talks. So I strongly recommend that you go to that URL and look at his um, slides for the sieving algorithms. So enumeration is something which, in practice, runs pretty well. It's exponential time, kind of, obviously. And it does find the shortest vector. Um, we have some bounds of time and quality of this, and I'm going to show you one example of what this pruning actually means. So let's jump right in. So here again, we have our vector. We have a basis of two vectors, and we're trying to figure out how to get a short vector in this lattice spanned here by B1 and B2. So we're now picking one direction. I'm picking the shortest direction. That's also pretty typical. And that is going to be our main direction. Now, here's a little bit of a simplification because we're just looking at two dimensions. It's, it's easy. But figuring out which one is the shortest is always easy. But when I talk about projection, when I talk about directions and so on, this will be hyperplane. So there will be dimension minus one. You'll see projections and so on. So then we're doing the line, which is orthogonal to it. And that's where hyperplanes normally come in. And then we project things onto this. So this is normally taking the n-dimensional B2, right, B2 living in the n-dimensional space, and projecting it onto this hyperplane, which is defining an n minus one dimensional space. So we're getting a B2 star. That's not in the lattice. I mean, this is not going to any of the dots here. There's nothing over here. But let's see what we can do with this. Well, now, draw lines parallel to B1 at distances that comes from this B2 star. So we're making a grid where we're putting parallel lines, putting vectors or lines which are parallel to B1 offset by B2 to the plus side and also to the minus side. And then the plot which we're going to enumerate, so what we're going to search through is going to be a sphere around B1. So the radius is going to be as large as the length of B1. And we're going to find everything, every lattice dot in there, but we're doing a guided search. So we're looking for points in the circle on these lines. And well, as you can see, all dots in the circle are on these lines. And so we're getting a simplification here. In larger dimensions, this would mean, well, you're first picking B1, projecting B2 onto it. Now you're picking this B2 star as a new direction. You're projecting B3 onto it, getting B3 star, and so on. So you're getting a tree in n dimensions. And each time doing a search down, what you're seeing here is basically the last level where you have everything in two-dimensional space. And it's kind of obvious which one is the shortest. But keep in mind, large dimensional lattices you can't look into. Okay, so we're now looking at distance plus B2 star, or sorry, zero times B2 star and finding, well, B1 and minus B1, we know those already. And then we're looking at distance one times B2 star, and we're finding those four blue dots on those lines. Then we're looking at two times the distance, 
three times the distance, and then we are already beyond what the circle is. So, well, minus four times the distance would be over here. Uh, five times the distance would be over there. <laughs> Zero, one, two, three, four. Four times the distance would be outside the circle. So three times would be the largest we can do. And then out of these much, much smaller number of, of dots or vectors, we can output the smallest. So here we then do find V1. So normally you would be um, going down to, well, two dimensions, find the shortest there, but then you have to backtrack and see whether choosing the second one, say, this was now short between those two on the first line, but then you have to, for that one, also do the descent for the other dimensions and so on and so forth. So enumeration goes pretty far right out. And you might think, hey, do these points out here actually ever have a chance of giving you the shortest vector? And that's the idea behind the pruning algorithms that say, well, since we are going for B1, no, it's the shortest of those which we found before, um, let's favor um, that direction over the other ones. And instead of considering a circle, so we're doing the same as before, but then instead of considering a circle, we're restricting the multiples of B2 by cutting off some part. And that's where the pruning comes from. So like when you have a tree, you're cutting out the outer branches when you're pruning a tree. And so similarly here, you're uh, pruning the search tree by saying, okay, well, we don't want to have two large multiples of this B2 star. And that helps a lot because, well, each of those has n minus uh, ranges of, of where these branches occur. Okay, and so then we have few dots to search through, and remember each dot we're searching through gives rise to a new tree if it's in higher dimensions. And again, we're finding the same vector. Um, it could happen that you're missing some, but each of the steps gets a lot cheaper, and so that's why it's worth it. So the search space gets smaller, so you find something short faster, and it's typically the case that the shortest vector is in the prune space. And, well, I have said the shortest vector is actually a shortest vector. So typically you're pruning, even if you're cutting off something here, on a different dimensions, on a different search, you'll find something which, which matches. So that's why, why pruning helps you in the enumeration. And so lots of um, action attacks which are doing, uh, well, which are finding shortest lattice vectors are using enumeration as pruning because it's very easy to implement even in a distributed manner. You can just tell your first computer, hey, you're searching the zero multiples in this direction, the one multiples go to that computer, the two multiples go to that computer, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this was an idea, giving you an idea of how some of these exponential time algorithms work. Please really take a look at sieving algorithms as well.